SpaceX deleted an entire system that every rocket in history depended on and replaced it with something engineers once called too weak to work, electric motors, to steer engines producing hundreds of tons of thrust. That decision sounds insane until you realize it may be the reason Starship survives Mars. For decades, rocket engineers agreed on one thing. If you want to steer a rocket engine, you use hydraulics. Not because they're elegant, not because they're simple, but because they're powerful. Hydraulics lift aircraft carriers. They move mountains. They don't care how heavy the load is. Electric motors? For most of rocket history, they were considered toys. So when SpaceX stripped every hydraulic system out of Starship and Super Heavy, engineers didn't just question the decision, they questioned the sanity. Here's the provocation. Hydraulics are the industry standard. Saturn V used hydraulics. The Space Shuttle used hydraulics. Falcon 9 uses hydraulics. They're proven. They're reliable. They work. Electric thrust vector control, on the other hand, was considered unrealistic for large rockets. So why would SpaceX abandon the safest option? Because they weren't designing a rocket for Earth. They were designing one that had to survive Mars. To understand why this matters, we need to talk about what hydraulics actually are. A hydraulic system is never just an actuator. It's a network high-pressure pumps, reservoirs filled with fluid, valves, seals, long lines routed through the vehicle. That fluid is often flammable. Those lines operate at extreme pressure. And if one component fails, the failure doesn't stay local, it spreads. Five, Early four, Starship casts three, exposed two, this brutally. One, Hydraulic leaks, fluid fires, off, aborted Falcon, tests. Not because SpaceX made mistakes, but because hydraulics create entire classes of failure. Every hose is a risk. Every seal is a potential leak. Every pump is a single point of escalation. And SpaceX hates that kind of risk. Yeah, this is where right their the philosophy right, comes power in. It all. A Raptor philosophy three. that looks radically simple, different, just straight up radical, tons of major changes. It's coming in, higher thrust, dramatic reduction no in parts, Every tons of control mechanisms remove, moved inside. The McGregor mass, team's built some additional stands like this one, which essentially is the bottom so of a super SpaceX heavy booster, lets us do gimbal question. or steering do tests. So that's been really exciting to see. At first glance, the answer should be yes. Hydraulics produce enormous force. Rocket engines are enormous loads, but force alone isn't the real requirement. Control, reliability, and survivability are, and hydraulics fail all three once you leave Earth. Let's talk about mass. Hydraulic systems are heavy. Pumps, fluid, redundancy, structural reinforcement. By deleting hydraulics from Super Heavy, SpaceX removed over one ton of mass. One ton. That's payload. That's margin. That's performance. In rocketry, mass is tyranny, and SpaceX just overthrew it. But mass wasn't the real breakthrough. Dryness was. A hydraulic rocket is never dry. It always carries fluid. Fluid that can leak fluid that can freeze, fluid that can degrade over time. Now imagine a six-month journey to Mars. No maintenance, no inspection, no replacement parts. A hydraulic leak on Earth is a scrub. A hydraulic leak on Mars is a mission-ending failure. Electric systems don't have this problem. An electric actuator needs a motor, a gearbox, a wire, a battery. No pressure, no fluid, no leaks. If the wire works, the motor works. If the battery has charge, the actuator moves. That simplicity is priceless beyond Earth. Now let's address the objection everyone raises. Power. Can electric motors really move something this massive? For decades, the answer was no. But technology changed. Lithium-ion batteries achieved massive power density electric motors reached extraordinary torque levels. Control electronics became precise and fast. SpaceX didn't wait for perfection. They waited for good enough. 
then they engineered the rest. This is where SpaceX's system thinking shines. Starship already needs large batteries, avionics, grid fin control, onboard systems, Electric thrust vector control didn't introduce a new subsystem, it reused an existing one. One power source, multiple functions, no additional complexity. There's another hidden advantage, precision. Electric motors are digitally native. They respond instantly to software commands. They integrate seamlessly with control algorithms. Hydraulics are analog. Electric motors are digital. Starship isn't a rocket with computers, it's a computer that happens to fly. Reliability is often misunderstood. Hydraulics are reliable when constantly maintained. Aircraft get frequent inspections, leaks are caught early, seals are replaced proactively. Mars doesn't offer maintenance windows. Electric systems shine here. Fewer parts, fewer failure modes, easier redundancy. If one actuator fails, software compensates. Manufacturing matters too. Hydraulic systems require precision plumbing. Routing lines through a rocket is slow and labor-intensive. Electric systems use wiring harnesses. Faster to install, easier to inspect, simpler to scale. If you want to build one rocket, hydraulics are fine. If you want to build hundreds, they become the bottleneck. This decision reveals something deeper about SpaceX. They are not afraid to abandon proven solutions if those solutions don't scale to the future. Hydraulics are proven on Earth. Mars doesn't care what's proven. Mars only cares what survives. Electric thrust vector control makes Starship lighter, simpler, drier, more software integrated, more survivable. Each benefit compounds, none of them matter alone. Together, they change everything. This is the difference between Legacy Aerospace and SpaceX. Legacy Aerospace asks, how do we minimize risk today? SpaceX asks, how do we eliminate entire categories of risk? The answer is often subtraction. Delete parts, delete systems, delete assumptions. Starship doesn't just challenge old hardware, it challenges old thinking. And deleting hydraulics is one of the clearest examples. Not flashy, not visible, but foundational. When Starship eventually lands on Mars, there won't be pumps humming, no fluid circulating, just motors, wires, batteries, and code. Quiet, simple, reliable. That's how you build a machine that leaves Earth and comes back. If this breakdown changed how you think about rocket engineering, you're exactly who the booster bay is built for. Here, we don't celebrate complexity, we celebrate clarity. Subscribe for more deep technical breakdowns, share this with someone who still believes hydraulics are unbeatable, and tell me in the comments, which would you trust on Mars? A powerful system full of fluid, or a simple one that only needs electricity? Because sometimes, progress isn't about adding more, it's about having the courage to remove what you no longer need. Frock it.